Welcome to Soul Magic 99. Thank you to all of those who've been watching and liking, sharing, subscribe, and please comment down below if there's any readings you want to see. Um, today I'm doing a past life love connection. Have you known each other before? This could be somebody in your current lifetime. Have you had relationships with them before? I thought they'd be interesting on a Valentine's Day. Something a bit different. So just pick a pile again. So pile one, pile two, and pile three. So just tune in to intuition and pick the pile you're guided to. So we're going to start with pile one. Got a selection of different cards, and then we're going to get some tarot. So this is a love message, and it actually does say love. So this could be a love connection you have with somebody. So let's get the additional message for that. Is there any other word in our language that has so many meanings, been so overused and misused? We long for it and agonise over its absence, but what does love really mean? To some people, love is about fidelity and loyalty. To some, it's about getting married. To some it's about sharing and to others it's about obligation and what you owe to the people who love you. We use the word and conjure up the idea frequently, yet we see shallow expressions of love everywhere around us in media and entertainment. You have drawn this card today because your angels and guides would like you to think about what love really is for you. It's very important for you to make time to contemplate love and how you can create more of it in your life. Close your eyes and get into the feeling of love, the pure raw energy of this creative force. This may seem a little abstract at first, but as you allow yourself to feel its presence and merge with its vibration, you'll begin to realise something amazing. Love is not confined to human relationships or interactions between living beings. It is a fundamental force that animates and guides the entire universe. Love is in the air we breathe the water we drink and the earth we walk upon. Love is quite literally all around and within you. If you would like to attract a loving relationship and improve your existing partnership, you can make a beautiful beginning by going to the source of love first. You need never be short of love. Tip, tapping into the endless flow of love that infuses every atom within and around you will provide nourishment for your soul and inspiration for your life. When you take time to contemplate love, feel the kind of love you desire and connect with universal love. You will be guided every step of the way by the greatest force ever created. So that's very deep, isn't it? So here are some past life cards. So we have scribe or writer. So maybe some of you were a scribe or a writer in a previous life. I'll get the message for you. This card reveals you had a great career as a writer or scribe in a past lifetime, which may be why you currently desire to write. You have the natural thinking style of someone who can organise thoughts into the written word. The fact you had the discipline to sit down and write in that previous lifetime shows you can exercise the same trait in this life. If you dream of being a published author, this card urges you to pursue that. Do research on writing and publishing, and more important, write every day, which can be in the form of journaling, letters, creative writing, or non-fiction writing, such as blogging or articles. If you have a strong enough desire to be a published author, and you're willing to put in the effort, you can attain your dream. So I feel some of you, because we're, you know, the age we're in now, we're like the technological age, as it were, I feel some of you could be bloggers out there, um you know you may have your own channels um and it's saying that you know obviously you have a talent for this and there could be a link to somebody in your past um to do with this that somebody maybe you're in touch with now and we also have the chaotic card to do with past lives i'm just going to get the message for that
You drew this card because you had a significant lifetime in Celtic lands. You continue to feel bonded to this culture. Perhaps you've visit, lived or visited the Isles of Ireland, Scotland, Wales or England. If so, you may have a sense of déjà vu and be an Anglophile, a person who adores these cultures. You're also fascinated with Stonehenge and King Arthur's Camelot. You may have learned the old religion of the Celtic lands, which involved the use of healing herbs and gaining wisdom from trees. You could even be an ancient druid in disguise. Your connection to the elemental realm has made you love fairies and owls, and all fae. You also respect and love trees, especially oaks and willows. If you hadn't already done so, schedule some visits to the ancient sacred areas of the UK and Ireland. It's in their stone circles, castles and spiritual artefacts may trigger additional healing memories. So again, I feel there was... um. For the person you're asking about, there's definitely a Celtic connection there. Um, maybe one or both of you had a lifetime in those parts of the UK, Ireland or Scotland. And if you do some research into that, that may trigger some past life memories for you as well, okay? So this is a starseed oracle card and it's saying yes, this is for your highest best. So yeah, look into your past, do research into that to find out a bit more about your history and it could trigger some past life memories for you, okay, which might make sense of current relationships for you. So we have a love message here and it says trust. Transformation occurs through acceptance. Once you accept the current situation, it will automatically transfer, transform. So it's asking for you to have trust in the situation at the moment and to see what, you know, what will be really will be, but just trust in the process. And then we have, give your relationship a chance, work on your partnership. So some of you may have met somebody and you're not, really sure you may have just met them and the message here is give your relationship a chance um work on your partnership because i do feel it's divinely guided connection you've got the angel wings here and again this could be a past life connection for you to somebody you knew once before and we have retreat it's time to disconnect from the world so it might be time for you and your significant other to just take some time out. You know, just be alone, just the two of you. Okay, and you know, just have that quiet, romantic time together. So now we're going to get some tarot messages. So can you tell me if this person had a past life connection to somebody in this lifetime? So definitely, I feel, you know, there is divine guidance here. There could be issues that you didn't resolve in a past life, so you're being guided to come together again in this lifetime, I feel. There was heartbreak. Okay, there was heartbreak in the situation. Um, and now there's time for you to make amends maybe one or both of you broke each other's hearts and i do feel now is the time to make amends with with what happened in the past so the blindfold is on here but you need to make a clear informed decision okay so you're indecisive but please you know take the blindfolds off make a a good informed decision here make up your mind because that's better to make up your mind than not to make up your mind at all because indecision is a decision and here we have truth you know just admit the truth to yourself of the situation okay because once you do that things will improve definitely So this is an, an emotionally mature man, the King of Cups. Um, 
he has a hard exterior but he is very emotional inside but he keeps that, keeps that hidden his posture is open he's very open okay to this relationship but he you're not sure to approach or not really but he he has an open posture he is ready for you to approach So if you're the feminine here, this is a feminine energy full of fire and passion, wanting to move forward, okay, with new growth, you know, there's blossoms on the end of the wand there, you know, you've you've got to a good place in your own life, you're independent financially and emotionally, but you're full of passion and, and you want to move forward with that passion for somebody. And we have someone else moving towards you, the Knight of Cups. So this is a younger energy and he has his cup outstretched. He's moving forwards, offering his love. Okay, so you could have a choice here in love. So now we're going to get some goddess messages for you. And we have the goddess Enhel Duana, the high priestess. I am one with my soul and my soul is a legacy of love. get some messages for that she embodies the ability to become one with our soul to live out our highest purpose born in Mesopotamia during the Arcadian Empire around 2285 BCE she is considered the first known female poet but also the first name literary author in history. It is believed that she was the daughter of Sumerian king Sargon of Arkad. She was given the title of En, which signified her tremendous political power. Sargon of Akkad named her the high priestess of the most important temple in Sumer, and she was charged with the lofty task of melding the Sumerian gods and goddesses with the Arcadian ones to create stability in the empire. She composed 42 hymns, and most famous works are titled The Exaltation of Vienna and the Sumerian Temple Hymns. The hymns were copied and used long after her death and considered immensely valuable, equal to the inscriptions of kings. She is credited with clearing, creating the structure of poetry, psalms and prayers that were then used throughout the ancient world. A hymn's influence has inspired the prayers and psalms of the Hebrew Bible and the Homeric epics. It is believed that she reached a semi-divine status in her lifetime and that she was considered to be the embodiment of the Sumerian goddess Yana. Use this intention. I am one with my soul, and my soul is a legacy of love. So definitely in this pile, getting the vibe of writing. You know, you have the gift of writing here. You know, poems, songs, blogs, you know. So, you know, use that talent, okay? And here we have a message from the uh, Ascended Masters. We have Mikhail Dick, Spiritual Law of Attraction. So let's get the message for you. The situation you're inquiring about has come to you via the spiritual law of attraction. You've attracted certain people or situations because they mirror your thoughts, emotions and beliefs. In the same way, people and situations you once found desirable are now moving out of your life as you shifted your energy through your spiritual path. Like attracts like means everything and everyone you draw to you is similar to your thoughts. If you want to change what or who to attract, hold more positive, loving and joyful thoughts. The Ascended Masters and Angels can help you with this shift. Additional meanings. You can change or heal this situation by elevating your thoughts 
to a more positive level. Your prayers and affirmations have attracted a wonderful new person or situation into your life. And this situation is not a reward or punishment. You have attracted it, which means you can also repel or magnify it as you choose. Visualise and affirm only what you desire. So you may have attracted somebody into your life at this time. And, you know, if that's not the sort of person you want, obviously you can change your thoughts to change, you know, what you attract. Okay, so that was pile one. Hello, pile two. So first we have a love card for you. Luminosity. When you are connected to your Divine Feminine, you become luminous. Your true nature shines from within and you glow. The luminous woman is the feminine counterpart to the chivalrous man. They are attracted to one another, complement, support and nurture each other. In this modern age, it can be difficult for a woman to find her luminous centre and live from that place because we have fallen into the trap of believing we are supposed to have, be and do it all, all of the time. What this usually means is the woman takes too much upon herself and tries to fill the roles of the men in her life instead of asking for their help. Being luminous requires pies. It is worth the extra effort, a patient at first, if that is required. Usually what is most effective is the adjustment of perspective. A luminous woman asks for what she needs with respect for the other person's time and feelings then goes about her day confident her request will be responded to. If it takes a little longer than she hoped, she does not become overbearing or critical. She simply focuses on her own life and what she is able to do. Thus creating a positive space for the chivalrous male to step into. Whether we like it or not, the responsibility of going first lies with the feminine, as very few men will continue to be chivalrous in the space of a woman who isn't luminous to some degree. Being luminous requires practice, as the feminine helps you to let go of your old patterns of taking over, micromanaging or insisting things be done your way. You have drawn this card today because the luminous woman is calling out for attention, urging you to be grateful and to incorporate some luminous energy into your busy day. Choose one th small thing you can imbue with your luminosity today. Put your request out there and give thanks for it being done. For men, this means the feminine energy is working within and through you in positive ways. Feel the ways you can become more connected to your heart and able to express your feelings more clearly. So that's a beautiful message. So now we've got some past life cards. So we have farm. So what was your connection to that? Your past life on a farm is influenced in the situation you're inquiring about. Perhaps you enjoyed a simple happy life and you crave that simplicity once more. You may have enjoyed the warmth and extended family during your farm life. Your angels may also be nudging you to become self-sustaining by growing your own food as you did in a prior life. You most likely carried forward your green thumb ability to grow plants as well. Also this card may be asking you to reconnect with animals and nature. which were a part of your past lifetime on a farm. If you had a past life accident involving farm equipment, this may carry forward to an unexplained injury in this life. You've also had relationships in that life that you're playing out in this one. Your body will tell you which situation fits, so notice any goosebumps, chills or other physical reactions as you read this section. So I do feel some of you actually had a relationship with somebody in that farm lifetime and you've actually reconnected with them again in this lifetime to maybe work on some karma so whatever resonates for you okay we also have the unrequited love card so let's see what the message is there it 
This card indicates you had a painful experience with unrequited love in a prior life. The person you loved deeply didn't share your feelings as you may have been betrayed or abandoned. This individual may be in your present life. These experiences of unrequited love may be negatively affecting you now. For example, you might distrust your lover's intentions or his or her ability to make a monogamous commitment. Sometimes their doubts have a basis in current reality. However, romantic insecurities can also be a product of prior lifetimes. When that occurs, the unconscious insecurities are difficult to pinpoint or heal unless they're consciously realised. This is where irrational jealousy and neediness may actually ruin an otherwise good relationship. Sometimes the best cure in past life regression for couples, so you can both remember the situation that caused you pain in other lives. So that, that might be a message for someone out there. You may be in a relationship where you feel you can't trust somebody, and this could link back to a past life that you had together, where the person didn't return your love, okay, and didn't treat you well. So, you know, you can do past life regression therapy, so that may help some of you. So we have a star seed message, so what's this? Pillar of light, utilize your light and raise the vibe. So some of you may have a connection to one of the stars, okay? It just looks like Pleiadian light, the blue light. So, you know, as well as having lifetimes on this planet, a lot of us had many lifetimes on other planets throughout the star system, other stars, other environments to learn and grow, for our soul to learn and grow. So again, maybe connect with that, you know, meditation. Ask your higher self to show you, you know, what your past lives were. So now we have a love message for you, which says... Life is a series of constantly shifting cycles. When we resist change, we resist the natural flow of life and create stress. Go with the flow. You will be surprised where it leads. So don't resist change, it's saying. Just go with the flow. Because by resisting change, sometimes we cause unnecessary stress for ourselves. And who needs that, really? So this card is saying, stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Okay, so, you know, just because things didn't work out in the past, it doesn't mean to say that they will continue to not work out. you just got to stay optimistic because what you focus on grows. So focus on happy, having a happy, fulfilling, romantic love life, okay? Because that is what you will attract in. And here we have new love. So by staying optimistic about your love life, you will attract new love. A new person has surged your romantic feelings. So this could be somebody that you've known. There's, see the angels in this card. This is divinely guided. So this could be a past love that has returned to you in this lifetime for you to work through. Okay. And it doesn't always mean in a negative way. Sometimes it's unfinished business, and sometimes it's just somebody brand new. So take whatever resonates for you at this time, okay? Just going to get some tarot. So, have you known this person before in a previous this relationship or new person have you known before in a previous lifetime so we have the star and I think that links in to me to that um, star seed card it's possible you've known somebody on, a, on another planet sorry if this sounds wacky to the, those of you out there but you know, we've had many lifetimes on many planets and this could be the return of somebody that you knew in that lifetime. Because we meet some people and we have an instant recognition, don't we, that we know them from before, but we don't always know why. So here's the seven of coins. 
so you've got to focus on the practical matters you know sorting out your finances okay so this is a practical matter that needs to be dealt with and then we have the tower coming in so this comes in you know to make a change you know sometimes we get stuck in our lives and we're not making those necessary changes or we're we're staying stuck because we're afraid of change so you know the divine will come in and create a change basically so you know there's various reasons for the tower it could be a change of job a change of relationship a change of location you know whatever resonates for you but there are changes coming in and don't be afraid to change because it's usually for the best this is divinely guided okay so they won't put you in harm's way and look at that wow after the tower you get the ace of cups so new love commitment you know happy happiness in a relationship the cup running over basically so there is happy news of a commitment coming up that's why i feel this is a commitment coming up for somebody so we have the page of wands so somebody has a new idea coming in um could be messages coming in for you about practical aspects in your life okay and you can see on the wand there's like new growth like leaves coming up so i think it's like springtime there's going to be some new new some news coming in with regard to your basic situation your life situation and here with the five of swords so you know you're fed up with the struggle okay you want to move away from the struggle you've had enough of the struggle okay and you're moving away from it and here we have the commitment the two of cups so you and another are going to make a commitment to each other you both have your cups of love for each other they're, they're full of emotion and love and that commitment and it's a well matched relationship so that's beautiful isn't it and you have the ace of pentacles as well so you'll be financially secure as well in this relationship okay so that's good news i'm going to leave that there so now we're getting a message from the divine feminine cards we have mary of nazareth the mother of god i am blessed my courage give birth to the divine let's get your additional message for you She represents the profound spiritual and creative power we all possess. Mary, or Miriam in Hebrew, was a first century Galilean Jewish woman from Nazareth, who is one of the most crucial figures in the Christian tradition for having given birth to Jesus Christ. Mary has been venerated since this in Christianity and also holds a revered position in Islam. Her many names include Saint Mary, Virgin Mary, Queen of Heaven, one Lady of the Angels, Our Lady of Good Counsel, Our Lady Undo of Knots, She Who Confirms the Truth, and Theotokos, which means God-bearer or Mother of God. The Gospel of Luke relates that when Mary was engaged to Joseph, the Archangel Gabriel visited her. Gabriel announced, What joy, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. The angel then said, The Holy Spirit will descend on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and therefore the child will be called holy and son of god and mary responds let it be with me as you have said mary is present throughout her son's ministry and when he appears at the temple at 12 and declares that he is true home when he turns water to wine at the wedding in cana and when he's crucified she is said to have remained at his side along with mary magdalene she personifies the steadfast and unconditional love of the archetypal mother. The town mother of God, or the Theotokos, was recognised at the Council of Ephesus in 431 CE and best captures the power of her, yes, to the angel Gabriel. He hands her a lily in the Annunciation to symbolise the Trinity and to honour the fact that without her, 
Yes, the Christian story could not have been unfolded. When your soul selects this card, I was always imagined that Mary was terrified to hear an angel loudly announcing she was meant to be the mother of God. Her surrender to Gabriel's words feels so courageous and too unacknowledged. Mary has no idea what she will have to meet with, what will be asked of her or what this love for her son will put her through, but she says yes nonetheless, so she can be in service of the divine. Her role has been in the shadow of the Christian story, uncelebrated because she is seen as, as so divine, but she was human. She could have said no, her courage could have faltered, but she's aligned with the light. She heard Gabriel's words, be not afraid, and allowed the divine story to work through her life. She felt she let joy dictate her response. Mary leads us to trust we can stay yes to what feels light. It doesn't have to make sense or work with the timeline the ego has mapped out for us. In the midst of our ordinary everyday lives, we can say yes to the angel who greets us in the space of our heart and let the energy of joy give birth to the divine through us. Intention. I am blessed. My courage gives birth to the divine. Wow, that's a deep message, isn't it? So some of you out there could be due to become a mother, that's what I'm picking up there. Or you could be pregnant at this time. And when you're a mother, it does change you. And you will do anything to protect your child, okay? So now we have an ascended master. We have King Solomon, priorities. Let's see what his message is for you. Devote time to your highest priorities, even if it means getting to bed earlier or later. This is a wonderful time to work on projects that are near and dear to your heart. Even if you're confused about how to approach the project, or you feel whether you'll be able to accomplish your dreams, do it anyway. You'll feel elated by the time and energy you invest into your true priorities, because your inner self will feel loved and cared for. As you invest in your priorities, you're investing in yourself. Let go of procrastination or perfectionism. Break your major goals into baby steps and take one step at a time. Revamp your schedule so that you can devote regular time to your priorities. Be assertive in saying no to anything that diverts you from your path. Well, that's the messages for pile two. Hello pile three, let's see what your cards have to say today. This is a love message. Manifestation. There are so many times in life when we wish we could manifest a specific item situation or even a person. Many people know how to visualise what they want, but how often do they consider the quality of the vibration or frequency they are emanating? If you're trying to manifest something but your chakras are out of alignment and not working together, this can create an energy that blocks whatever it is you wish to attract. The following heart manifestation balance help you bring your heart, solar plexus and shape navel chakras into alignment so your energy can work for you. It's so simple. Your heart chakra represents your heart's desire and intuition. Your solar plexus represents your sense of self, material reality and your gut instincts. And your navel chakra represents your creativity, fertility and ability to manifest. Once you've located these powerful energy centers at the center of your chest, the center of your midriff, and just below your navel. Simply imagine a flow of energy and light moving through and connecting the three of them in a figure eight. When you begin, it may be difficult to visualize or feel anything. The figure eight may feel heavy or sluggish or weak and watery. In its healthy state, this energy connection will be rich in a 
beautiful bright colour and feel like a strong flow pulsing up and down through the figure 8 shape. Place your hands on any of these three chakras may help you feel the energy. Close your eyes and make it easier to sense the clear bright colour emerging in your heart manifestation connection. Once you feel for the energy pulsing up and down, smoothly you can add the final ingredient. Focus on what it is you would like to manifest. This is a great balance to do as you are lying in bed. Morning or evening is fine. You can start your day by tuning into your heart's desire or drift off to sleep or connecting to all that is available to you in the universe. And remember your intention and willingness are the most important factors. So even if you don't see or feel much, be sure to persevere. So that is an amazing um, exercise to do with your chakras. You can see the energy centers there, the heart, the solar plexus and the sacral. So that's a beautiful exercise to do to help you manifest, okay? So now we're going to get some past life messages. So we've got Atlantis here. So I don't know if some of you have ever felt drawn to that story about Atlantis. You know, if you've read any books about it, it's fascinating. I personally feel I did have a lifetime in Atlantis. Um, it was a very advanced spiritually spiritual age and also technological but things went badly wrong basically anyway your lifetime in ancient Atlantis affecting your current situation you have soul memories of this idyllic situ civilization that offered every imaginable wonder there's a longing for the utopia that you unconsciously remember and which you know is possible in this world your soul also remembers the tragic ending of Atlantis and you may have developed phobias about the ocean as a result. Although you love the sea, perhaps you prefer not to go swimming or sailing. You also recall how the majority of Atlanteans were peace-loving, with the exception of a few political leaders who misused crystal power to the detriment of all. So you may be extra sensitive to issues relating to political corruption in this lifetime. Well, I don't know about you, but that actually resonates for me very much. So I have a fear of water. I don't like to go. I can't swim, but I love being by the ocean. And again, I feel those of you who picked this pile, you may have had a beautiful connection in Atlantis. Um, it was a very spiritual time. You know, it wasn't a material time at all. There was technology, um, but people lived peacefully and simply. And you may have had a really beautiful connection with somebody and it may be that they've come back into your life now at a time when you are ready, you know, when you more spiritually developed maybe at this time. And here we have male, female as well. Let's have a look at that. Because with um, reincarnation, which is what we're talking about here, I believe we all have many, many lifetimes. Um... And we incarnate as both male and female to experience everything. And this card signifies you've lived most of your lives as a different gender than the one you are now. For example, you now may now be a female, while in most of your previous lifetimes you were male. In such cases, gender confusion, even the health issues, are often related to this change of gender over lifetimes. Because for most of you, your lifetimes you lived as the other sex, you may not feel comfortable in your own skin. If this is your first lifetime as a woman, you may develop gynecological issues or experience infertility. If this is your first lifetime as a man, you may not relate to traditional masculine roles. This card asks you to have compassion for yourself and trust your soul is doing the best it can. Remember, your soul is a result of all your past experiences. So, you know, this may speak to some of you out there. You may have issues with your sexuality. Um, you know, when we have our lifetimes, we choose to incarnate, to experience every everything there is, you know, in the masculine body and in the feminine body. But after all, we, you know, as, as a human person in this experience, we have the masculine and feminine energies within us. And it is about learning to balance those, okay? And you could be in a relationship with somebody in this lifetime or, or meet somebody 
where you were the opposites. For example, you could now be the male, and they were the they are the female. When in another lifetime, you were the female and they were the male. Okay, if you understand what I'm saying. So, you know, again, you may find that that you know is how you connect, and you would both understand the opposite essence of the other person you know like as a man you would understand it from the feminine perspective and vice versa okay so if you want to there are many past life regression meditations online that you could try so if you feel that resonates you know have a go go and listen to some one of those they're very powerful okay you may not know what comes up but it's very powerful and it could help you in this lifetime so now we have a message for you so this links back to maybe you could but some of you could be a star seed and it's saying it is safe to say no so sometimes we're afraid to say no to people you know we don't like to let people down you know we feel by saying no that we are letting people down but we need to have boundaries and we need to respect our own space and time because if you're, I've been in this situation myself, if you're forever doing for other people, you just get worn out and run down and then there's nothing left for anybody. So it's having that, you know, respect for yourself, you know, to say no for a good reason, okay? So we have a love message. Manifesting miracles. Your dream is soon to become reality. Trust your heart and continue to follow your guidance. So some of you out there may not be in a relationship, but you are trying to manifest that within your life. Okay, and it's saying it's on the way. So trust your heart, trust your intuition. Make sure you're clear in what it is you desire, because it's on its way to you now. Okay. So we have some love messages. So it's saying get to know, getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. And I get the feeling in this pile as well, this could be a connection that you had maybe back in the Victorian times. Um, the dresses, the clothes they're wearing reminds me of Victorian England, you know, very, you know, very, you know, dressed smartly all the time, you know, nobody lazed about in leggings or pyjama bottoms. <laughs> Everybody was dressed smartly, you know, the women had the, the fitted corsets and the beautiful dresses. And the men were, this guy looks like he's in some sort of uniform. You know, they were very smartly dressed, you know, with even ties and, you know, matching handkerchiefs. They wore hats, the men they had a cane. You know, everything was like prim and proper, but deep under the surface, there was a lot of issues and problems, obviously. And this could be linking back to a lifetime you had together in those times. Again, if that resonates, maybe do a past life meditation to see what comes up for you. And this could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. So again, I think this is relating to someone you met before in a past lifetime. As I say, from the dress there, um, you know, definitely relating back to, this could be medieval times, this one. Um, the dresses they're wearing, the clothes they're wearing. Um, again, it's the divinely guarded connection. So this could be a meant to be situation that you're, you were meant to meet this person, and this is your destiny in this lifetime because it's guided by the angels. So I've got a goddess message for you. So we have Sarah Lacalle, Queen of the Outsiders. I have arrived. I am where I will always be in love. Let's get the additional message for you. Sarah Lacalle is a symbol of the love that endures, the love that never dies, 
There are three main legends that surround Saint Sarah. She is known as the charitable noblewoman who collected alms for the poor in the south of France at the beginning of the first century. She had a vision the female saints who were present at Jesus' death would arrive on their shores, and when they did, around the year 42, Saint Sarah was the first to lovingly welcome them with open arms. The golden legend from the 13th century says that Saint Sarah arrived with the three Marys, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary and Mary of Bethany, as one of their slaves. She was said to be Egyptian, very beautiful and endowed with healing powers. The third legend is the daughter of Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ. During the persecution of the early Christians, it is believed that Mary Magdalene fled with young Sarah, Jesus' mother, and Mary of Bethany to the south of France. There she raised Sarah and continued her ministry of love, of becoming what Christ referred to as true human beings, meaning both fully human and fully divine. She is known as the Queen of the Outsiders. She is the beloved patron, saint of the Romany people. She is carried from a crypt in the cathedral to the sea on horseback. Every May 24th by thousands of Romany who gather to annually to celebrate her. There's an ancient chest in St. Sarah's Cathedral that contains the relics of the three Marys. St. Sarah represents the spiritual tenets of the Kameg, Cross, Faith and Hope, but above all love. Intention I have arrived. I am where I will always be in love. So that's beautiful message. Some of you in love there. It's a beautiful message. And now we have a ascended master. We have Kutumi. Stay focused. So let's see what his message is for you. You drew this card as a reminder to stay focused upon your intentions, desires and priorities. Don't allow yourself to be distracted by short-term situations, dramas or other people's demands. Keep a positive outlook about your dreams and imagine they are already manifested into reality. Devote regular amounts of time towards your projects and priorities. Say no to distractions and you will see results. Be assertive with demands upon your time and keep your promises to yourself. Commit to your priorities. Spend